So thanks for having me over this evening to speak with you. I've just gotten back to Bangalore after a few weeks in Parliament and I've spent the most of those few weeks uh, engaged in what most of you would consider a fruitless debate. So this is a bit of a welcome change to speak with uh, all of you and some of the young students, smart students of uh, Malayaditi and, your par and their parents. Look, let me start by saying I find it uh, difficult to explain what the makes me tick or what inspires me specifically. Um, I've been asked this before. I have asked myself this. Uh, a lot of the time, my friends and family who don't see me as often as they would like to see me ask me that as well, obviously in a different context. Uh, they keep asking me why I continue to do what I do and why I continue to do more and newer and newer things. And uh, I frankly don't have an answer for it, but let me, because this, this topic has been posed to me, let me try and explain it this evening. Um, let me try and explain it in a slightly different way. I don't know how many of you have seen a movie called Saving Private Ryan. It's a Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg movie. And the movie starts with a scene where uh, the old Matt Damon character, playing the character of Private Ryan, walks through the World War II uh, war cemeteries at Normandy, uh, up to the tombstones of the soldiers who rescued him in, this, in the movie, and after saluting, addresses the Captain Miller's grave, and he says, and I quote, my family is with me today. They wanted to come with me. To be honest with you, I wasn't sure how I'd feel coming back. Every day I think about what you said to me that day on the bridge. I tried to live my life the best I could. I hope that was enough. I hope that at least in your eyes, I've earned what all of you have done for me. He then turns to his wife and asks, tell me, have I led a good life? Tell me I'm a good man. And she says, yes, you are. And this, in a lot of ways, sums it up for me. The purpose of life or a career or work should be seen as doing good and leading a good life in the eyes of those who you respect, who respect you and love you. You live one life, live it as if you have to answer that same question that Private Ryan asked his wife at some point in your life. To the question of who or what inspires me, I can only say that at different stages of my life, different things and different people have motivated me and inspired me. I say things because more than specific people, it's specific actions, thoughts and values that inspire, have inspired me, inspire me today and will inspire me. I sometimes try to analyze this myself and find a common thread. What is this common thread? What, 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 what makes, what turns me on? What uh, gets me going? And I think, and without being very facetious, the common thread for me has been the values of idealism, kindness, courage. And as I describe to you the people who inspire me, uh, who have inspired me, you'll find that this, these common threads, this common thread runs across all of those people. I am a big believer that your experiences as a child or a young person growing up and absorbing shape and define you as a person. Your values and beliefs gravitate you to the right kind of people, the right role models, and give you the confidence, therefore, to be passionate and believe in your goals. Passionate about your goals and to believe in them. Being inspired is really important if you want to exceed your own limits. I think a man or a woman and his mind can take that person so far, but an external catalyst of an inspiration pushes you beyond the limits that you would otherwise achieve on your own. So it's to exceed your own limits or if you're straying off the beaten path. But I always say to those who ask me, be inspired not just by names or big achievements or the headlines, especially in India where all of those are very easy to achieve, but by actions, beliefs and ideals. And like the famous Formula One driver Ayrton Senna once said, and he's an idol of mine, and I quote, I have no idols, I admire work, dedication and competence, end quote. Since you've asked me what, what my life and my inspirations, I will move into that territory. It's uncharted territory for me as well. So here's my first shot at it. For those who know me, uh, some of you do, some, uh, some of you don't. I've been a nomadic Air Force, Indian Air Force kid uh, living all over India. I've been an average student most of my life. I had a short spell, an aberration, my parents would call it, <laughs> where I ex excelled academically. 
they are still trying to figure out how that happened. I became a full blown nerd with an insatiable, insatiable appetite for churning out code. I used to program like there was no tomorrow. Then an entrepreneur, then an investor and now a politician. And funnily enough, yesterday, day before yesterday, I was in a panel discussion in uh, Delhi and somebody uh, introduced me as a telecom entrepreneur, a politician and a media investor. All of those three names, those three things are bad names today in, Indian, in India. So I have been through uh, all three of those, let's say, uh, questionable uh, careers at, at some point in my time. So all seemingly unconnected and different, but through all the ups and downs in each one of these periods in my life, I have, I must say, I have always loved what I've done. I have uh, loved fighting, I have loved uh, working with people, I've uh, taken on the system, the system has taken me on, but all through I think there's one common thread that I, I never stopped enjoying what I did. And, you know, People ask me, my life was never anything but normal and average in many ways and uh, different in just one way in that I seem to have been given opportunities at every stage that you can put down to uh, fate or uh, you know whatever but would, which were other than normal. But I have go gone down each one of these forks in the road of life, I mean I have taken these left turns or right turns with enthusiasm and energy more than any plan and strategy. And that is where inspirations come in and kick in. Because with inspirations to guide me more than management books or manuals, uh, you know, I've really gone down from being, like I said, a telecom, entrepre a telecom entrepreneur, a geek, a politician, and an investor. And I believe, like I said earlier, being inspired is really, really important if one needs to do well, especially if you're going off the beaten path. And I completely subscribe to what Steve Jobs said when he said, you have to find something to do that you love. And, and, and that's all about what I do. I, 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 you know, I wake up in the morning, turn on Indigo 91.9, that's a plug for my radio station. Um, and I, I wake up and I enjoy what I do the, the whole day, even if it's in parliament. So from my childhood to t today, I've always, and let me just lay out what, what kind of have, has inspired me. What, I mean, I, don't, I can't tell you all one million things that have inspired me, but let me try and tell you a few. From, from the earliest memories that I have as a child to today, I've always been inspired by the sense of duty and commitment to our country of our uniformed armed forces, for example. In my office in Delhi, it's a parliamentary office. Most parliamentarians put pictures of uh, their party president, a party icon or a statue or, you know, an elephant or whatever. Uh, I surround myself with pictures of every Paramir Chakra recipient that the country has had, from names like Major Shaitan Singh to Havalda Yogendra Yadav. And at a time when our definition of icons in India are limited to either cricketers or film stars, um, I think these men and their stories of courage and service to the nation keep me fairly focused, especially when I'm in Delhi and I keep the company of your favorite uh, tribe of people, the politician, and uh, other notables who run our capital city and our nation. And to summarize why I do what I do with these images and pictures and these, uh, these personalities, a recent posthumous gallantry award citation described an officer, and I quote as, he was a true soldier who was dedicated to his country, end quote. I can't think of any one politician that would be worthy of that description today in our country. So that's one. In the days when I was pursuing my studies in Chicago and worked as a design engineer and then as a CPU architect at Intel, like I mentioned, I became a major lead geek. I was, I mean, on a diet of coffee and donuts and my life revolved around churning out lines of code. And at that time, the man who inspired me the most, and there were a few, but the man that stands out was a gentleman called Richard Stallman. And for those of you who are in the technology business, you'll recognize him as now the founder of the Free Software Foundation. 
and he was really the first one in those days and then, now you know i'm taking you guys uh, taking everybody back to the mid 80s and the late 80s he made it easy for people like us to experiment and write our own language compilers parsers translators and at one stage he even had a complete operating system which 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 rivaled the uh, unix operating system that came out of berkeley and sun i was at intel at those in those days and most of the technologies that you take for granted today whether it's the internet the laptop client server database database computing high speed processors graphic engines were all being built in various shops around the valley those days and as a young engineer working with people like john crawford who was the father of the x86 microprocessor in intel interacting with the legendary andy grove the founder of uh, intel who made famous the quote Uh, only the paranoid survive all of these things shaped me forever and i i have no hesitation in saying this and i've said this many times that's a piece of me that's a part of me that that's stint in intel that has shaped me forever in terms of my attitude towards uh, technology business and people and excellence and innovation my first experience in entrepreneurship post intel was in the early 1990s and as fate would have it one of the first people i met and the entrepreneurship was in obviously cellular telecom cellular and the first one of the first people i met when i was trying to understand this was a gentleman called craig mccaw and in the history of uh, in the history of uh, contemporary technology as as you know as has been narrated and has been written uh, craig does not get enough of due but he is the man who created from scratch an almost nationwide consumer cellular product and experience in the us and then got copied by many countries and many companies all over the world and created the technology the business and the financing model for cellular that has made cellular today the ubiquitous consumer experience that you and i enjoy he fate as fate would have it he was the man that i engaged with first the pioneer of cellular he taught me so much about it we worked together partnered together for a while in uh, in bombay before his company got bought out by at&t to become what was then uh, to become in future what was the at&t wireless which is one of the largest cellular companies in the world um you all heard of steve jobs i mean steve jobs affects all our lives today he was yet another inspiration for me but not so much for his uh, iPhones and the iPads and the iPods. Steve Jobs was an inspiration for me because he represented the greatest second act in the history of business. After being thrown out in the late 80s from Apple for the flop of the Lisa microcomputer system, so he did have a flop, even though it's difficult to imagine that today. Coming back almost two decades later to create a new Apple and Pixar. and becoming the single largest shareholder of disney is Im is immensely awe inspiring and i always recommend to uh, young university students and college students who uh, interact with the two books that they must read of course i'm uh, partial to them so i push these books one is a book called money out of thin air which describes the life of craig mccaw and the other is a book called icon which is the history of the second coming of uh, steve jobs great books and i would recommend that you know youngsters here in the school read them as well so that was the entrepreneurship part so i described the geek part i described the entrepreneurship part and let me tell you about the political side of my life and the earliest political contacts were with a gentleman called rajesh pilot he was a late congress leader his son today is a young up and coming uh, political leader from rajasthan sachin uh in a lot of ways rajesh pilot was a i don't want to call it a mentor but i wasn't in politics those days but he was clearly an inspiration to me he was a man who con uh, represented contemporary idealism and political conviction when i first was elected to parliament in 2006 i read more about him and i realized that he again in the history of the modern narrative of indian politic political history he is a man who hasn't hasn't been discussed enough and again uh, when in 2006 i entered politics and 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 entered parliament 
I started reading the early Constituent Assembly debates and speeches that led to the creation of the Constitution of India and the formation of our Republic. The speeches by Sardar Patel, Zakir Hussain, Dr. Ambedkar, Jawaharlal Nehru are amazingly inspirational documents, visionary documents that are testament to the idealism on which this idea of India was created in the first place. It's, I mean, I would encourage this, not as mandatory reading, but reading by anybody who is following politics and the history of India. It's of course tragic now that the many generations of politicians in this country have reduced that great idea of India to a distortion. And again in politics, another inspirational piece of reading for me, uh, even though I've never had any personal experience of him, was the life and times of President John F. Kennedy and his, his writings and his speeches, especially the great speech where he laid out that ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. So that, along with the current idealism of President Obama, represents, let's say, the inspirations for me in politics. Um, every time I walk into parliament and I hear of another scam or um, see something that is completely dysfunctional like garbage in Bangalore, for example, you tend to go back into the history of India and say, this is not what the real uh, politics is about. This is not what real politicians are about. There was an original idea that is a far more powerful and compelling idea. And, you know, that's, that's what we should aspire to. That's what I should aspire to. And then, of course, there are personal heroes like the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong, the first open art surgeon, Dr. Christian Bernard, both of whom I've had the honor and pleasure of meeting. Pure perseverance of, for example, Mary Com, Debendra Singh Laishram, Sushil Kumar, who have uh, achieved such, such great standards of sport, despite you know what's happening in the sports administration in this country. Pure perseverance, pure guts is what they personify. Musicians like Stevie Ray Vaughan, Buddy Guy, Robert Johnson, Eminem, they provide another form of inspiration to me. And every day for me, I see things, I hear words, I see, meet people, I see actions that inspire me. And, and I, I kid you not, it, they make me feel small and want to do more every day. Look at the recipients every year of the Namo Bangalore Awards. In our own city, you find such supermen and superwomen who are doing such tremendous work, uh, you know, away from the glare of publicity for nothing other than just pure service to their communities and their friends and their families and people. People that Amir Khan's program Satyamevya Jayate on, uh, on Star showcase, you know, they do their thing, they do it out of a pure conviction, idealism and belief in the goodness of their fellow brother or sister. And just a month ago, I must tell you that I was a judge in a debate for over 30 young students in Delhi University and Delhi schools about freedom of the internet. And as you know, that's a raging debate today in, uh, in both the parliament and uh, outside about attempts to censor the internet and so on. And I used to, before this debate, belong to the school of thought that the younger generation in India are, in a sense, detached from the real issues that are challenging our nation. And I promise you that I heard that debate by 30 young um, boys and girls, ladies and gents, um, that just completely blew me away. And I said at the end of it that it inspired me so much because the standard of the debate and the points that they were making was so superior to the debate on internet that had just happened in parliament about two months ago that I said, look, I am pretty happy now that the future of the internet need not be fought by old fogies like us. There are, uh, you know, there is a whole new generation that shall fight Kapil Sibyl and his attempts to censor the net. 
and that left it completely you know it left me very 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 impressed let me end by saying this and i i, I think i've taken enough of time being inspired for me i believe and i need not be the last word on this is a process it should be continuous it should always be about the deeds thoughts and ideals of a person and not the person per se being inspired should make you think smile and make you exceed your expectations and i i strongly believe this in the report card of life inspirations get you an a for leading a good life and as private ryan said in the movie it's all about being able to say at the end of the day we have led a good life thank you for having me here this evening jain